welcome back. We are going to look a bit at um, fatty acid profiles in soap in the next few videos um, because those are the little building blocks of soap making and those are the guys that determines the quality of your soap. If it is bubbly, um, long lasting, um, it gives you a stable foam or not and so on. So let's just jump right into it. And we're going to look at stearic acid first because stearic acid is one of those fatty acids that is actually readily obtainable in an isolated form should you like to use it like that. But we're going to look at um, where to find it, what we're going to use it for um, and so on. So the first thing is they usually, do it, um, they usually use it as a thickening um, or a hardening agent. So thickening in shampoos conditioners, um, creams, balms, that normally in those things and then for a hardener you can use it in soap and even in um, candle making. Candle makers usually add stearic acid to their candles as well um, just to make it harder and longer lasting so it burns a little bit longer. Okay, so that is where we're going to use it. Um, then where to find it. Now the easiest way to see where we're going to find it for our purposes is in the soap making calculator. Um, I use soapmakingfriend.com. Um, you can use many other soap calculators. I believe you will find the information there as well. But um, just I'm going to use this one. Let's just jump over to the screen here. Um, I've got soap making friend open here. I'm not even going to log in. Um, I've enlarged it a little bit so that you can see better on the screen. So you're going to look on the left hand side, there's little numbers there, go down to number 5, which is your oils, your fats and your waxes. So you're going to go to the bottom of this block and then you will see add new or expand. So you're just going to click on expand there and I need to sh shrink this a little bit. There we go. Now we can see stearic acid. So it's got all the fatty acids right next to one another. You can slide it from the rest to the right. If it's a little bit smaller on your screen, then you can see all of them at the same time. So we're going to open this and then you're going to look at stearic acid here. And you can just go down the list and see where is something that is high in stearic acid. So let's just quickly scroll a little bit here. Stearic acid is stuff 33. Okay, let's see what is 33. 33 cocoa butter. Okay, so where you can find it is usually your animal fats. Um, like tallow and lard, they are between 13% and 25% um, 13 for lard and 25% for tallow. can go a little bit up for different other tallows as well like deer and so on. So you can find stearic acid in those and then in plant is it usually most of the time it's your butters. So cocoa butter, shea butter, um, just to give you an idea, it's between um, co cocoa butter is 56%. Um, cocoa butter 33%, shea 40 and soy, okay sorry, we will get to soy wax. So your butters are actually quite high in stearic acid as well. So here's your sub values, your INS value is quite high, it's 196. So keep this in mind, if you want to make soap that you want um, to come slowly to trace because you want to do swirls and so on, be very careful for stearic acid. Keep an eye on your total INS and try to keep it under 145. Otherwise, it's going to um, become thick very quickly. If you move to the right hand side here, you will see the hardness is 99, longevity is 99 and creamy leather 99. So cleansing, zero. Now zero doesn't mean it's not going to clean. Um, it will clean, but it's not very soluble soap. It's a very hard soap. so you don't want a 99% stearic acid soap. You're going to struggle to get this one foaming. So this is just to give you an idea. Um, then another thing, a challenge with stearic acid in your soap. Stearic acid spots, you will hear about it, you will see it sometime um, and maybe experience it. Stearic acid needs 50 degrees Celsius or a little bit higher to melt it. So if you are soaping at room temperature and you are using stearic acid or very high stearic acid content, it means that um, your, soap is gonna, your soap is gonna cool down too quickly and the stearic acid is gonna start to clump up before it saponifies. So then you're gonna get those little white pimples in your soap. 
it's just cosmetic it's not a big issue but if you don't like stearic acid spots in your soap remember you need to soap a little bit warmer a 50 degrees celsius 55 degrees celsius is usually a good good one for this one to soap at okay so that is the profiles of those um, then you can get isolated stearic acid as well now uh, soy wax is 87 percent stearic acid and then you can buy stearic acid um, granules as well now normally the stearic acid granules are uh, derivative from palm oil um, so it's got a little bit palmitic acid and stearic acid mixed into one another but you can buy clean stearic acid as well now stearic acid is usually quite cheap it's not a very expensive and you use very little of it if you use clean stearic acid in your soap go for maximum 10 percent um, because this is going to harden your soap quite a lot it is not very soluble um, that is the reason why in shaving soaps shaving soap we like to use a, a, a high amount of stearic acid in there but to get it to, to, to be more soluble we use um, potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide as a dew lie in our soap I will leave a link in the description box for that as well I do have a video where I make a dual light um, shaving soap so the uh, potassium hydroxide is usually the lye that you use for liquid soaps um, if you use it in soap making you're going to get in, end up with a paste and if you do a dual lye you're just going to get a softer soap that is a little bit more soluble for and for shaving soap that's awesome so that is all that I have to say about stearic acid um, so you know now where to find it um, it's actually a very lovely uh, additive to your soap it's going to give you that nice creaminess um, and yeah I will see you guys in the next video again be blessed and stay safe keep well